religion that guide the mannerisms and actions of individuals that practice these religions. But it appears as though when people come into politics or come into leadership in our country, that part of the learning from childhood appears to be thrown out. And then the rules that are said to be part of the religious teachings, the various religions here, are not applied, which include things like, you always hear people say, every religion preaches peace. Every religion preaches love. Every religion preaches coexistence. But it looks as if when they get into these positions of leadership, they jettison this. So how do, why is it that they don't apply these rules you keep talking about? Yeah, my, my brother, that's a very great uh, observation. You see, the proper name for what you have described is hypocrisy. That's the proper name. You know, you don't divorce reality from self. You know, uh, so it's just having been, having grown up to know the right things to do, having grown up to study and learn the right things to do religiously, uh, you know, and then out of, uh, when it, those things are very valuable, when they are essential, when they are very much needed, and then somebody will tell you, drop this religion, you are asking me to drop my conscience. That's what you are asking me. You are asking me to drop my worldview. You are asking me to drop every good thing I have learned from, uh, from uh, the Bible. You know, that's what you are asking me. I mean, that is a strategy to, to, to uh, relegate religion to private, to private enterprise. And the, I mean, uh, our religion affects Christian, um, Christianity intersects with the way we live our life, that is part of politics, the way we treat other people, that is part of politics, you know, and the, it, it intercepts and interacts it. And if I can't use it there, I wonder where I should. So I think it's hypocritical for someone to tell me, leave your faith by the side and come into politics. Don't preach religion. Yes, now, if you ask me because my faith teaches peace, I shouldn't preach peace, I shouldn't come into religion, you don't want peace, because it, it, it had helped me and made me a man of integrity, that I should live integrity by the side, I should live faithfulness by the side, you know, I should live accountability by the side, and I should live moral uh, purity by the side. That is what you're asking me to do. But uh, we want people to understand that religion, especially Christianity, can mix, you know, with politics. If because I, that is actually the moral foundation of society. And if I may way, come in here, um, have, uh, sorry to, uh, to just uh, butt in here, but when you look at the so many strife, crisis, if you will, uh, that uh, we have faced in the recent past, how then does tolerance come into play when you say the things that you say? Are we pushing forward an agenda or preaching enough? The tolerance should be considered as one of the uh, tools we could use to, uh, you know, quell some of these upheavals that we've seen, some of those crises and killings that we've recorded in the country. Um, actually, there are many facets of religion. I'm a Christian, and I, I come from the uh, I come from the perspective of a um, biblical worldview of politics and government. And other people have some values in their own system uh, that are healthy also for society. And uh, because of our failure to um, harness, because of our failure to integrate, because of our failure to uh, properly blend these healthy moral values, like we've, called, like we've correctly pointed out, tolerance, peace, and uh, many of them, because we have failed to blend it, because we have considered it inconsequential in government, and that is why most of it is not happening. You know, that's why most of it is not, not happening. And then we have to take into consideration religious extremism, which is the main bane of our problem, you know, in this nation and other nations. We know that uh, 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 religion, uh, uh, re uh, people don't understand religion from one theological base and they don't feel from one um, uh, theological resource. And the way they understand this religion uh, uh, impels or compels or influences them to behave the way they behave. And if it is wrongly perverted, if this re religion is wrongly perverted or uh, is dented from the foundation, I mean, it also 
becomes a problem to the, uh, everybody in the society. I mean, uh, so tolerance is healthy, and then uh, it depends on, it also behoves on most of the preachers, especially in areas of religious extremism from where this theology, wrong theology has been imported to infect society that have generated into all these uh, pogroms and uh, terrorisms and, uh, and the genocides that we've been having, which is terrible, and they could have made it impossible for people to tolerate one another, and which have injected hatred and, um, and, um, and division in society. So I think the men of God, the clergy across board, Christianity, Islam, and other religions has a responsibility to get their adherents to uh, remain focused, to remain um, to remain focused, and uh, and uh, and uh, practice what they teach them: healthy moral principles of tolerance, of integrity, of uh, accountability, of tolerating one another. And for me, my own religion, coming from a Christian perspective, the foundation of Christianity is love. We can see that Jesus demonstrated love from every round of his life, and he teaches his uh, disciples to love one another. And the, the, the parable of the Good Samaritan, we, are, we let you know that we should be our neighbor's keeper. We should love them, even as we do love ourselves. Can, can I come if in here this, again? Uh, can I come in here again, if you will, please? Um, uh, when you look at uh, religion as it is today, do you, in your vastness and understanding of uh, uh, what religion should be, what uh, different religions, as a matter of fact, should be, are we losing, as a people, especially here in Nigeria, are we losing that ingredient, that basic necessities in our religious circles, if you will, to teach our children the essence of what religion should be and how to go about it? There is a great lacuna in that area. There is a great vacuum in that area. And this stems from both ignorance and greed. There is a misuse of the principles of the scripture most of the times in that area. The right thing is that it is the responsibility first of parents to teach their children, you know, yeah. uh, because uh, the Lord, had bought the scripture, uh, the Bible, had, God was, I mean, Moses was speaking to the children of Israel. He told them that this, uh, that they should teach, the book of the Lord, they should teach it to their children when they go out and when they come in, when they eat and when they are not eating, when they are sitting down and when they are standing up. It's the responsibility of parents, you know, uh, who to teach their children. And uh, when, when parents lack the biblical worldview or the appropriate religious foundation to train their children, it, be, it becomes a problem. And how do they get this? And uh, that's why every, every, every Friday people go to mosque, every Sunday people go to church and has different uh, 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 religious activities within the week. What does the preacher tell them? Do they, do they, do they use the word of God as self-looker to fill themselves? Do they, do they teach them the whole counsel of God? You see, um, a Christian is a Christian for Christianity, the whole what we call dual citizenship. A dual citizenship is a citizen of heaven. It's a citizen of a homely homeland. There are obligations required for you on both, on both uh, uh, nations, which is the, 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 the city, uh, the earthly, your earthly homeland and your heavenly homeland. And uh, uh, St. Augustine described it as, um, as um, the city of God and the city of man. There are obligations and rights and there are duties that you have to brace up with, and this duty has to do with how, what, who you are in that uh, earthly citizenship jump in and who you are in your heavenly citizenship. Let, let, let me ju jump in a bit and ask you this. I mean, you know, I, I come across people who say, well, uh, for them, Christianity is not a religion. Uh, it's a way of life. Uh, but, you know, you have people who think it's a religion. Maybe they, they look at it as such. But... Is it ever possible? Can it be reconciled such that we impact the society? Because if it's a way of life, yeah. it's the, the tenets, the yeah. principles, yeah. that yeah. if they apply them on a daily basis, the results should be seen in society. As you were talking about the salts, which is the salt of the earth. If you lose its savour, it loses its essence. So how is it that 
we don't get to see as much as we'd love to, those values, those tenets, those principles exuded, experienced, expressed, and then impacting society by those who are supposed to make it so. Yes, actually, uh, I will agree with you that uh, Christianity is not a religion. It is a life lived, embracing Jesus as Savior and Lord, and committing your whole life in obeying him. So it is a way of life. It's not something you do on Sunday, and on Monday it is not there, you won't do it. It's not something that you have the liberty to do all you want to do, and then come back to church, and church is all you do. So religion is, uh, uh, it is, it is, it is a, it's, it's not a religion. Christianity is not a religion. It is a, it is a, a, it is a life lived in pursuit of the values that Jesus uh, has uh, given to us. You know, the Bible says that, um, that looking unto Jesus, who is, the, who is the author and finisher of our faith. So, and, um, and let me let you know, especially for uh, uh, Christianity, most of this perversion or ignorance that have uh, led to uh, society to misunderstanding of the uh, biblical worldview of government is from lack of understanding. Um, G the Bible tells us that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is not Lord just for the church. He is not just Lord in our Sunday schools only and in our choir practices. Jesus is Lord over every area of life. Jesus is Lord over government. He's Lord over politics. He's Lord over economics. You know, he is Lord over every facet and spectrum of life. So the authority of God is, 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 is over-encompassing into every area of life. So, and the Bible speaks of not just uh, what you call spiritual things, it speaks about all things, everything in life. And how do you uh, discover what the Bible says about politics? It is by the diligent application, diligent, um, uh, all right, diligent we, knowledge. We know, need to anchor uh, at that point. Very well said. Uh, we appreciate your comment on this morning. Uh, Mr. Emmanuel Ihim is a pastor and president, International Missions Outreach Incorporated. Thank you very much indeed uh, for being on the show today. A Merry Christmas to you and yours. Uh, we'll be back in a moment. Don't go away.